How you doing, everybody? Today, we're going to take a quick look at The Accountant, directed by Gavin O'Connor and starring Ben Affleck and Anna Kendrick. Ben Affleck plays Christian Wolf, a high-functioning autistic man with a form of Asperger syndrome who is very talented in math and also very talented in murdering people in the face, but not so good in the social department. He is an accountant for some very dangerous criminals and also runs a small CPA office in a small town as a front. And when the Treasury Department starts looking into his illegal activities, he decides to back off from the world of crime for a bit to throw them off the trail and takes up some legitimate work. He takes on a contract job with a manufacturing company, and the president of this company believes someone has been embezzling money, and he wants Christian to get to the bottom of it. But as he starts working his mad accounting skills and gets closer to the root of the problem, a group of mercenaries led by this guy called Brax, played by John Bernthal, move in and start going after some high-profile people within the company. And lots of people start dying. So this movie was... kinda silly. Well, not kind of. It was silly. It was pretty silly, but it does have its fun moments. The action sequences are pretty well done. Ben Affleck gets to kick plenty of ass. John Bernthal, likewise. Even Anna Kendrick gets a few shots in in one scene. It was pretty fun. But the story is... not exactly very well done. I mean, the premise alone is already kind of silly of this autistic child growing up to become the mercenary Rain Man, basically. He's an excellent killer. Definitely an excellent killer. Yeah. He's also very fond of the nursery rhyme Solomon Grundy. We hear that a lot in this movie. And, you know, given that Ben Affleck also plays Batman, I guess that's kind of appropriate. And Christian's entire upbringing in this movie is just completely batshit. When he's a small child, his parents take him to see this specialist who runs a home for children with various neurological disorders and seems like a pretty good guy, seems like he knows what he's doing, and he even offers to give his parents basically like a few months of a trial period where he can stay at the home completely free of charge. Sounds like a smoking deal, but his father, who is a complete moron, says, nope, I got a better idea. I'm gonna teach him how to fight. Basically, the father's logic is, hey, my son is different, Kids hate different, so he's gonna get picked on a lot. He should know how to defend himself, which, you know, in and of itself is not necessarily a bad idea. But he doesn't just take his kid to a small karate class at their local YMCA or anything. No, 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 no. He takes him to fucking Jakarta. Him and his brother both, they get taken to freaking Jakarta to get trained by this internationally renowned martial arts master or some shit. I, I guess maybe the dad saw the raid and thought, hey, these guys in Jakarta are pretty good. Maybe they can teach my son how to fight. Boys, pack a bag. We're going to Jakarta. I don't even know where it is, but we're going there. But anyway, he grows up to become the accountant and is eventually investigated by the Treasury Department. And the investigation is led by J.K. Simmons and Cynthia Adai Robinson. And the latter I've never heard of, but for what it's worth, she was pretty good in this movie. It's just a shame that their story didn't really amount to anything. The entire Treasury Department angle really goes nowhere. The whole thing just feels like a setup for another story that they have planned later on down the road, if they can somehow turn this into a franchise. Which does not seem likely, because this movie is not making that much money. And towards the end of this movie, there are two big reveals involving a couple of characters in this movie, one of which is this woman who we never actually see until the very end, but she is constantly in contact with Chris on his cell phone and basically gives him advice and hooks him up with jobs and whatnot. And it's not until the very end that we find out who the hell this person is. And I will admit, I did not see that one coming. Like, that, that actually got me. The other big reveal involves John Bernthal's character, and that one I saw coming a mile away. Because every time they show flashback scenes involving Chris, they always mention his brother. He always has a brother with him. He's very close with his brother. But when he becomes an adult, suddenly we never see the brother. Even when he attends his mom's funeral, 
Brother's not there. Nowhere to be found. Where could he be? Hmm, I wonder if it might have anything to do with this other guy who we know from the flashback scenes has had the exact same training as Chris and also happens to be a very highly skilled mercenary. Yeah. Obviously, that's his brother. And don't tell me that's a spoiler, because if you watched this movie, you would have figured it out about halfway through, if not sooner. Now, the cast in this movie is just loaded with extremely talented people. You got J.K. Simmons and Anda Kendrick, who I already mentioned. Jeffrey Tambor is in here. John Lithgow. And they all do an incredible job. And even Ben Affleck is really good in this. Unfortunately, some of the most talented people in this movie don't have all that much to do. There is one person especially, I don't want to say who it was because that'll be getting into heavy spoiler territory, but this guy only has a couple of very brief scenes and then disappears from the movie altogether until the very end where he suddenly shows up again and is also the villain somehow. And even after it's revealed that he's been the villain the whole time, apparently, he still doesn't do anything. He just sits there while everyone else shoots at each other. And yeah, that's it. It's a total wasted character. And one last complaint I have to make. Ben Affleck's house in this movie. He apparently has a bunch of security cameras all over the backyard, just in case somebody finds out who he is and what he's doing and wants to come get him. But he doesn't have anything in the front, as far as security cameras go. Instead, he's got a fucking ceiling-mounted minigun in his living room. And that is ridiculous enough on its own, but here's the thing, that minigun is never fired. Not once in the entire movie. It goes completely unused. Why the fuck would you put a minigun in a movie and not fire a single shot? That's just stupid. It's Chekhov's minigun. Come on! So while this does have its fun moments, I can't really give it a strong recommendation because I just don't think there's enough there. But I would say maybe it's worth a rental. That's about as far as I'm going to go. And that's all I got to say about The Accountant. So until next time... Take care.